Hello and welcome to my video review of the GE Z-Wave Easy Smart Switch. So I've begun today by removing the cover plate off of the existing switch that I have in this room and I've taken the liberty of disconnecting the uh, load wire as well as turning off the circuit breaker first uh, down in the basement to this circuit. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go step by step through connecting the new switch. So what we're going to start with is we're going to disconnect these wires. Um, because this is a pretty simple switch here, I don't need to label them. Um, but if you have like a, if you had a three-way switch, I would definitely mark which wires go to uh, which screw specifically and what they are, because um, you don't want to try to figure that out while you're in the middle of the task of rewiring. Um, Normally you would have a white wire for your neutral. Uh, the people that wired up my house did not use white wires for, all the time for the neutral, so um, I kind of ignore that and I just have to identify what color they actually did use. Um, I'm going to remove this ground wire here. Fortunately they use green as they're supposed to. And I'm going to take that off. So pretty quick and easy there. Then what we're going to do is on the back here you'll notice that it has different labels and if we can focus on this here and it's a little bit difficult to focus just because it is a shiny surface um, but basically over here is neutral and then you have a traveler for a through for a three-way switch you have a line selector which is your circuit breaker side and load charge which is the device that's being electrified um, so what we're going to do is and then of course you have your ground down below here and they usually usually manufacturers make that green screw as well uh, to make that easy the ground screw is going to be the last thing we hook up though um, other thing on the front here and it's probably going to be hard to see but uh, you actually have an up arrow here to tell you which direction the switch is to be oriented. So we're going to start with this neutral, just because I have this circuit turned off at the breaker, I don't have to worry about causing any sparks, otherwise um, there is a specific order you go in. But we're going to go to the neutral wire here, and we're just going to make sure that it's loosened up. It's currently loosened all the way. Um, and then what I like to do is actually use the straight wire going across as opposed to a curled one now. Um, back in the day I used to curve those around. I'd use like a screwdriver to do that, to make that curve. Um, but now they put the holes on the back that you just slide the wire right in and crank the screw down. Um, so what you do is you just slide it in like so and then just tighten the screw. And this is pretty easy do once you get your screwdriver actually in the screw. Just turn it until it is very snug. Because you don't want that wire coming out. So that's one screw down. Now of course um, if I had been using the old black wire you can see I'd had a curved end like that on one side would have had to straighten it out, but because I don't want to do it the way the other electricians did it because it was kind of weird, um, I'm actually going to use from the circuit breaker side here to the fan on top. So this is going to be line selector on the bottom screw here. And if it doesn't go in uh, pretty easily in there, you'll want to straighten the wire out because there's too much of a curve. So you just hold it in again, tighten the screw, Just snug. You don't have to um, apply a you know ton, metric ton of force to it. Just enough that it's not going to slip out. And then, of course, try to run your wires just so that they're not tangling around each other. Um, you don't want to make it a pain for yourself if you have to switch the switch out again. You know, and you get a short circuit or something, or uh, not short circuit, but if you get a power surge in it 
far as your Z-Wave switch, you don't want to make it a pain to swap it out. Um, so just make sure you do that. And then, like I said, I want to straighten out this one. Um, I use solid strain just because it's what I prefer. The reason most electricians will not use that is because if you bend solid strain too many times, it just breaks. Um, but fortunately, I haven't dealt with this one many times. So we're just going to straighten it out. And I'm going to clip off a little bit of excess off of this one. Um, because we don't want... We don't want uninsulated wire hanging off the switch really far. Um, that's also a hazard. So I'm going to do that. And then we have our green ground up here. And normally we would um, just slip it in straight. But because we don't have that, um, what, you're gonna what I, you can also do with pliers, just wrap it around like that. And it gives you the curve for a screw. And then bend it out just slightly. And then, um, to make it easy on yourself, wrap the screw around in the direction where it's going to pull the wire inside as opposed to pushing it out when you tighten the screw down. So, in other words, wrap it around going clock, or the screw, or the wire goes, wraps around the screw going counterclockwise. Um, and just again, Tighten it just enough where it's not going to slip off. That's pretty much it. Um, then, like with any electrical job, get electrical tape. It's usually black. Um, not always is black, but usually is. Uh, it doesn't really matter with the color. It doesn't really differentiate um, what its purpose is, as long as it's electrical tape. Um, and what this does is it just prevents the screws and the wires from coming into contact with any other metal that may be present in the box um, as well as I've actually got an issue currently on my house where um, because of a bad roofing job there's actually water entering in through the conduit a little bit um, just condensation so this will actually keep the water away from those connections um, what I'll do is I'll wrap it around the back and then we just push the stuff back into the wall and turn the breaker back on, test it, make sure it works, and that's it. So thank you for watching my review and enjoy your home automation.